Hey guys, it's me, Holiday Sparky here. Hey, where's that one guy that does the intros? Oh, don't worry about him. He's in the North Pole, if you know what I'm saying. Wink, wink. But today, I will be your guide through all things safety, health, and wellness. In today's episode, we will be seeing the best of previous episodes, the graduation of 2021 Firefighter Youth Academy, and gaze upon the beauty of Vallejo. It'll be an exciting show. Hope you enjoy. Hello, my name is Astrid. And my name is Pamela. And in this Academy segment, we will be proudly presenting our graduation ceremony. Please enjoy this recap of our year at the Academy. My name is Pamela Bisamis. I'm a cadet at the Ronald McBee Firefighter EMS Youth Academy, and I'm a junior at Jesse Bethel High School. My favorite part of the Academy, I'll always like the community and how competitive it is. Competition is always my favorite part. Hello, my name is Sarah Menta. Um, I'm a junior at Mount Diablo High School. And my favorite part of the Academy was the EMS Olympics because it was really fun using all the things that we learned from the Academy to good use. Hi, my name is Genesis Carlisle. Um, I go to Jesse Bethel High School. My favorite part about the Academy was we actually put out live fires. That was pretty fun. You get to work with your teammates, but it's also you being by yourself as an individual. And it's also like you get to do stuff like hands-on. Hi, my name is Christopher Rare, and I'm Lieutenant at the Robin McBee Firefighter EMS Youth Academy. I attend Jesse Beto High School as a junior. My favorite part of the academy was being here with my family. Just getting to know them, getting to know what they love and that we have connections. It was just the best thing ever. My name is Moses. 17, senior in high school, go to Red Bluff High School. Something that challenged me that was also fun was climbing up the ladder. It was different from everything else we did. It really got my adrenaline going. Hi, my name is Finley McVeigh. I'm 16 years old and I go to Jesse Bethel High School. My favorite part of the program is this information to save a life. Hello, my name is Ashton Morales and I am a cadet at the Robin McBee Firefighter Youth Academy. I'm also a sophomore at Jesse Bethel High School. My favorite part of the academy would be the EMS Olympics, specifically when you learn something new that you don't know. And I'm so happy that I get the chance to be here. My name is Rita Morales and I'm a sophomore at Jesse Bethel High School. And my favorite part of the academy is the team building and how we thrive to like make each other better. So yeah, that's my favorite part. My favorite part of the academy was like when I climbed the ladder. Cause like I was like scared of heights. And my cadets and they just cheered me on and stuff. So I kept going high up and then I just overcome my fears and I'm not scared of heights anymore. So yeah. My name is Taylor Queen. I go to Jesse Bethel High School and I am in the 11th grade. My favorite part about Fire Academy is the EMS Olympics. I love doing the splinting, the bleeding control, CPR. I just love all of it. And I just like learning how to help people. Hi, my name is Cecil Santos. I'm 15 years old. I attend American Canyon High School. And my favorite parts about the academy is doing real world things like CPR and a lot of things that save people's lives. Hi, my name is Devin Solano. I go to Santa Rosa High School. And one of my memorable memories about this academy is just making a second family because my first family is my first and this is our second. So that'll be one thing. My name is Luis Torres and I'm a cadet at the Ramic B Firefighter EMS Youth Academy. I go to Vallejo High School. My favorite part of the academy was uh, getting to do competitions, specifically when we rolled hoses. Um, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but uh, toot toot. I'm pretty good at it, so you guys could see if you watch our show. Wink wink. My name is Ivan, I go to Vallejo High. My favorite part of the academy was finally having my first year as a lieutenant. I got to get new bonds with cadets, and I got a new bond with another lieutenant too. I got to teach new cadets things that I was once in their position and I was learning those things, so it's like full circle. Yeah, that, that was the biggest part that I enjoyed, was teaching new cadets and forming new bonds. Hey everyone, I'm Olga Vasquez and I'm a junior at Jesse Bethel High School. One of my favorite things about the academy here is we have a like a second family here. Everyone has developed such a close bond with each other. Everyone supports each other to become the best versions of themselves that they can be. I'm Dominic Bell. I'm currently working at Medic Ambulance at the SST and my favorite part about the academy was the EMS Olympics because of the friendly competition. Hello, my name is Devin Wells. I'm a lieutenant in the Rob McBee Firefighter EMS Youth Academy and I joined the academy as a means to help my community and to provide community service. One thing I enjoyed this year was the EMS portion of the uh, program and my most uh, favorite part was when we got to do CPR and first aid. 
Hello, my name is Kevin Wells. I'm a lieutenant of the Rod McBee Firefighter EMS Youth Academy. This year we had many great experiences throughout our time here. And one of my most notable memories is teaching all of the uh, cadets, being their mentor, being someone they can look up to uh, and an example to them. And uh, hopefully I've left a good message for them to follow and a good example for them. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed our little journey down memory lane. If you ever miss a segment on the Academy or any other segment in the show, you can view past episodes on our YouTube channel at Firefighter Youth Academy by Safari. See you there! One thing I love about the holidays is food. There are cookies, hot cocoa, and turkey. Speaking of food, it smells like something's burning. Oh no! The cookies! Ouch! My paws! As much as I love food, I cannot cook. For those of you that are cooking during the holidays, make sure you're safe. Wear baking mitts when handling hot dishes, and if there's a grease fire, don't put water on it. Instead, put a lid on it, like so. And most important of all, don't forget the cookies. Ouch, my paws! Another festive food is deep fried turkey. Cooking a deep fried turkey is a hefty job. As much as you may want to, don't, unless you know how to do it right and safely. Here are some examples of what happens when you're not prepared. What the jingle bells? That is crazy! Well folks, if you decide to deep fry a turkey, do your research. Make sure you do it in a safe environment and hope that it goes right. Hello everyone, I am Olga. And I'm Ivan. And this month in our health segment, we will be doing things differently by going back to revisit some of our best health segments from this past season. During this season in our health segments, our topics have ranged from COVID-19 to mental health. We'll be starting things off with Medic Ambulance, who has been a longtime supporter of both our academy and program. In episode two, they talked about the evolution of the EMS Olympics and the skills taught during our academy. Additionally, different career paths for our cadets from the academy. With that being that I didn't know what I wanted to do after high school, the Youth Academy provided me with the opportunity to come to Medic. And at Medic, I do a lot of things. I stock the ambulances, I help out, you know, I, it just prepares me for that firehouse, you know. Um, you know, I take out the trash, I, I stock the stock room, stock the ambulances, shine the tires. You got to make sure the rig is A-OK, -okay, basically, you know. The skills that I use that the Youth Academy taught me that I still use today uh, in Medic, um, basically just being professional, um, taught me uh, manners and just different way to how to talk and how to speak to people. So basically, that's what I still use today in Medic and I just everyday life. The uh, skills and knowledge that we're giving them in the Youth Academy is directly out of what EMTs and paramedics and firefighters do every day. Any cadet that goes through the Youth Academy is going to definitely just excel in EMR courses and EMT courses. They're going to have that foundation already there. What motivates me is just being able to take the knowledge and experience that I've gained over the years and pass it on to the next batch. Um, I'd like the folks that uh, come through my classes and kind of come into their career after I do to be better at it than me. Um, I'd like to see the students surpass the master. So just getting to pass that information on and pass my, my knowledge along is really what, uh, what motivates me. I think it's awesome to see how passionate and what so is about teaching our cadets the beginner skills of EMS and EMR. Yeah, um, I thought that it was also cool to see how our alumni from our academy have continued to utilize skills from the academy in their career journeys through Medic Ambulance. Now we're going to revisit Kaiser Permanente and their educational theater in episode 3. Kaiser Permanente has their own theater group who utilizes theatrical performances to educate the youth. And in this piece, they discuss the COVID-19 vaccine and their five-step peer pressure resistance model. So another thing we're hearing from our young people is that they are excited about the vaccine, but their friends and family just aren't interested. Mm. So what can they do in those situations? That's a really tough one. And you know, it, it can be challenging to talk to friends and family about vaccines. I do it every single day with my families and with my patients. And I have to say one of the most important things that I've learned is to listen. You know, of course, we need to know the medical facts. Mm -hmm. That is so crucial, especially right now when there is so much misinformation on the internet. You need to know your source. And one of the best ones, ask your doctor. Peer pressure can be overwhelming. And 
I find it's overwhelming even when you know your plan. So I actually have heard, Maya, that your program is amazing for helping all of us navigate these really complex social situations. I'm so happy you brought that up. We have a five-step peer pressure resistance model that can help keep us safe regardless of what the people around us may or may not do. So here are the five steps. Step one, ask questions. Step two, name the trouble. Step three, say what might happen. Step four, suggest something else. And step five is to leave and leave the door open. Now, the easiest way to understand the peer pressure resistance model is to see it in real time. So here we go. Lights, camera, action. Hey dude, thanks for inviting me to Milo's birthday party next month. Oh, don't mention it. Um, I'm actually about to head out. They're providing free vaccines at the clinic near my house. Let's go get vaccinated together. Mm, no, I'm good. Ugh, I hate needles. You, you scared the shot will hurt? I guess. And you really shouldn't do it either. I heard vaccines can give you COVID or something. Where did you hear that? Online. <sighs> well, there's a lot of myths and lies floating around the internet about COVID. And if we don't get accurate information, it's easy to feel confused. Okay, but you aren't a doctor either. So why are you acting like you know so much? I talked to my pediatrician. They said you cannot get COVID from the vaccine. And if people don't get vaccinated, it's easier to get COVID-19 and keep spreading it to others. You're kind of being a little extra and I already told you I'm good. I'm not being extra. I'm just excited to get vaccinated. My whole family is going. Look, I even finally confessed my grandma to get it. Anyway, after we go to the clinic, do you want to meet up outside somewhere? Look, I'm down as long as we, uh... As long as we wear masks and are socially distanced. I know, I know. Look, you know what? I think I'm just going to hang out till alone tonight. Okay, well, I'm going to get vaccinated, but I'll hit you up after I'm done. Or if you change your mind and want to hang out, text me. Whatever. I think that the segment was aired during an important time, especially because of the way that vaccines were being distributed and the hesitancy that some people had. Yeah, I think Kaiser's five-step peer pressure resistance mode was good, especially since it left the door open for people experiencing hesitancy. We will now be revisiting a health segment where we had the pleasure of featuring Mr. Alan Lake, a clinical social worker and therapist, who answered some questions and provided resources on mental health in episode six. My name is Rose Baca, and my question for you is, what are some common symptoms of someone who is mentally unwell? Some common symptoms of people who are mentally unwell, mm -hmm. um, I would say things to look out for is poor sleep, like sleeping too much or sleeping too little, uh, change in appetite, uh, energy, uh, low energy or high energy. Um, those are some, those are kind of the basic signs to look for. Um, also, if you're hearing voices or seeing things that aren't there, those, those are pretty common signs. Um, I am Cadet Ashton Morales. My question is, what would you recommend to those who are struggling with general mental issues? Yeah, the, I would encourage someone struggling with mental issues to kind of notice what's going on inside their body. Um, and if they're having difficulty managing those, whatever's going on, reach out to a friend, a parent, a trusted adult, um, and get some help. Talk to, talk to someone about what's going on and um, learn some skills to cope. Can you elaborate a little bit on that in terms of what physically happening inside their body? What are they experiencing? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, if there's some symptoms like poor sleep, poor appetite, uh, you, you definitely want to recognize those things. Um, if you're noticing your, your heart's beating faster or you're sweating too much, or for me, it's like I get this butterfly feeling in my stomach. I call it bubble guts. So if you're noticing symptoms inside your body and you're having difficulty managing those emotions or those feelings, definitely notice and reach out. I'm Cadet Taylor Queen. Where can teens get access to good mental health help? 
Yeah, uh, there's a lot of a lot of therapists in the community. Um, you can do a Google search and, and find out what therapists are in the community. I'll give you a little uh, a little inside trick that if you call a therapist and ask for an appointment, they'll usually do a 30 minute assessment right there. Right. So you can kind of just explain what's going on and it'll probably give you some tools and tips how to manage um, whatever situation you're in briefly. Um, and then you can kind of gauge if you want to go into therapy with that therapist. If you have mental health uh, or you, if you have health insurance, you can probably go through your your health insurance and find a, a therapist through Kaiser or whatever health insurance you have. Um, there's a lot of information on the internet. Uh, NAMI, the National Association of Mental Illness, is a very good resource on the internet. They have a lot of information about mental health. It's really important to uh, elaborate on how um, it is not you personally who's experiencing difficulty, but it's a friend or a family member. Yeah, and that's difficult too because you know there's that stigma around mental health and being called crazy and, and all of those things, and, and it's really all that is is just a stigma, right? And mental health is actually a good thing in retrospect. So um, you want to just be able to talk to your friend and, and kind of point out what you're noticing. Um, I'm noticing you're not sleeping too well. I notice you have bags under your whatever you're noticing. Just if you're comfortable pointing those things out to your friend or family member, just point those things out. Um, you don't have to say, hey, you need to see a therapist because that can kind of be kind of touchy. Right. Um, but definitely kind of explain to your friend or family member what you see, what you notice. I've noticed you've changed. Are things OK? And just kind of start the dialogue. Um, ask the question, have you thought about going to see a therapist, right? Rather than saying, why don't you go see a therapist? Just ask a question. That's kind of what a therapist does. They just, they ask questions, right? Therapists don't really solve problems. We just get you to think, right? So maybe ask a question. Have you thought about seeing a therapist? Um, and it'll get them to thinking. I think that the information that was provided by Mr. Alan Lake has given us a helpful insight on how to recognize and find help when dealing with mental health. I think it's also important how Mr. Lake talked about destigmatizing mental health. We would like to thank Medic Ambulance, Kaiser Permanente, and Mr. Alan Lake for providing us these memorable moments this past season. We hope you enjoyed revisiting those segments as much as we have. We hope to see more from Medic, Kaiser, and Mr. Alan Lake next season. Well, that's it for this segment, but not for the episode. So sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of the show with Sparky. When handling ornaments, be careful not to break them. And if you do, sweep up and handle all broken glass carefully. Ouch. If you accidentally hurt yourself, be sure to clean it and put a bandage on it. Oh, look, what is under the Christmas tree? I wonder what it could be. Oh my god, my favorite! It's a fire extinguisher! He's always coming, Paul. Hello again. Get ready for what we think is the best of education this season. It's been a very strange year. It changed the way everyone did things and it changed the way everyone interacted. It even changed the way that the education system functioned, but that didn't stop us from sharing knowledge on how to stay safe. Let's take a look back together to see what we've shared about education. Like when Ms. Madsen got interviewed about topics like getting adjusted to teaching virtually, information on the fire prevention collaboration the school has with the academy, and even an insight on how and why she became a mentor. And how have teachers and students adjusted to the COVID-19? It's been a very difficult adjustment. A lot of our students feel very stressed looking at the computer, even the younger students. We've had a lot of difficulties with parents understanding how to log into the particular platforms that their students have to do. Um, we have tried to help the parents. They've made some adjustments and are starting to get the hang of uh, having classes online. However, our parents do prefer in person and so we're hoping that that is very successful in the future. 
Things have changed since Ms. Madsen's interview. We went from having our teachers trying their best to teachers from home, to having to be interactive once again and communicate effectively virtually. Here are some of my interviews with my teachers with changes and how we've had to adapt. Though coming back does set its own challenges, with my teachers' responses, that reassure me that we are going to get through them together. This is my cybersecurity teacher and my Algebra 2 teacher. Her name is Ms. Sharma. And first question, what are some of the challenges you face with teaching after COVID? So I mean, as far as the challenges uh, of coming back from COVID are concerned, the biggest challenge is that the students have forgotten how to be students again in person. Uh, it's hard uh, for them to communicate with each other. And uh, now that we are at you know, this part of the year, they are still gaining some of those skills back. I'm seeing more socialization, uh, but initially it was so quiet in the room. Uh, so that's one, having them keep their masks on at all times is another hard battle that I'm still fighting every day because uh, they don't, nobody likes to keep the mask on and students for sure don't, but I have to remind them that we are still in COVID. And thirdly, the math skills, especially for a math teacher, they have gone down a whole lot. So I have to do a lot of intervention stuff this year. What are some of the safety precautions you are enforcing to keep yourself and your students safe? We are making sure that everybody wears masks at all times, like I mentioned in my last um, answer. We uh, want to make sure that they're using wipes. So if, if you know they want to wipe their desks or normally I... We were asked to do it every day. We are not doing it every day for every student, but if I see anything, I do end up wiping it by myself or you know, tell a student to wipe it. We have the hand sanitizer right at the door that they have to use when they come in. Uh, I have extra masks, all PPE supplies, if anybody needs them at any time. So we are trying to make sure, and the distance, of course, we are trying to keep the distance of, we are trying not to put them too many times in groups where they can still stay in their seat and have a talk with a partner, but they don't necessarily have to come too close to each other. Lastly, we are grateful to have the Solano Fire Academy on our show. A lot of cadets from our academy plan on one day being a firefighter, and going to a fire academy is one of those major steps in the journey to becoming a firefighter. With that being said, we really appreciate Chief Preciado and the Solano Fire Academy by helping us through that step in our journey by sharing their routines and activities with us. My name is Brian Preciado. I'm a Fire Tech Academy Director, retired fire chief from the city of Vacaville. This is a Firefighter One Academy. What that means is we follow a Firefighter One curriculum and it's credited by the California State Fire Marshal's Office. We're fortunate where we have a partnership with the City of Dixon Fire Department here. And as you can see, they have great facilities here, props, the training tower, and that really coincides with our need for the Fire Academy. Ready for water? We also have access to their equipment, which is huge, the fire engines. The majority of my instructors are active firefighters. One of my instructors is a captain with the Fairfield Fire Department. She's a retired Marine. A lot of the personnel here are our instructors as well, so they have a lot of interest and vested interest in this program. It's been an amazing year. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to spread knowledge on important topics like fire safety and education. I'm super excited to start next season's programming. If you would like to watch our past episodes, you can visit our YouTube, Firefighter Youth Academy by Safari. But don't miss this too much because we'll be coming back with an exciting season too. Candles are well known for being part of the holidays. Whether you're lighting a menorah or some other holiday candle, you have to be safe. Keep your candles from things that catch fire or melt easily. Space heaters are the modern alternative to fire, an easy way to get warm, but they are not free of danger. Space heaters are involved in more than a thousand fires and some 50 deaths every year. In order to be safe, you have to make sure it is certified and not dangerous for homes, has a sensor to shut off when falling over, and is electric. Those that are not electric need proper venting. When using a space heater, give it space. Don't put it near flammable items or cover it, or put it on top of furniture. Be careful with plugging it in. Extension cords and power strips may lead to overheating, so plug it into the wall and don't trip the cord. Also, don't get it wet or touch it when wet. Overall, no liquids. Hello, I'm Christopher and I'm Lieutenant the Robin McGee Firefighter EMS Youth Academy. In today's art, culture, and community segment, we are featuring Vallejo's beauty through visual representation. We're honored to have Vallejo's Community Art Foundation 
because they send in some of the artists' best work. Well, I hope you enjoyed that segment because I certainly did. We also would like to thank Vallejo's Community Art Foundation again because of their pieces. We'll now see Sparky and his story. Once upon a time, there was a pup named Sparky. Sparky loved the holidays and every year he would snuggle in a blanket near the warm fire. The puppy siblings and him would all surround Mama Sparky. Mama Sparky would tell stories of amazing heroes saving people. One time, she told a story about a firefighter named Robin McBee. This firefighter saved people from burning buildings and taught kids how to be safe. After hearing that, he wanted to be a firefighter. Ever since the start of the dream, Sparky worked hard and learned all he could about fire safety. Now Sparky is known all around the world for his extraordinary efforts to fight fires by educating youth. It is never too early or late to learn how to be safe and teach others too. Hope you have a happy holiday. See you next season.